on to the headlines. Self-proclaimed healer found with 24 human skulls in Uganda. Food poisoning claims six lives in Cameroon. Mexican opposition senators flip to ruling bloc on the verge of supermajority. Tunisian court allows presidential candidate Meki to resume election bid. Good morning and welcome to Traceability TV News, your source for the latest updates on global traceability and safety concerns. I'm your host, Miriam Munyoki. We begin our bulletin with a deeply unsettling story out of Uganda, where authorities have made a shocking discovery in the suburbs of the capital, Kampala. A man claiming to be a healer has been found with human remains and the details of this case are as horrifying as they are alarming. Our reporter has the full story. A self-proclaimed healer, Damulira Godfrey, has been arrested after authorities discovered 24 human skulls in his possession. The police suspect that these remains were used for human sacrifice. Along with the skulls, animal remains and skins were found in Godfrey's Shrine, located in the suburbs of Kampala, the capital city. The suspect is expected to be charged under the Prevention and Prohibition of Human Sacrifice Act, which could lead to a life sentence if convicted. Police are continuing to search the shrine for more human remains as the investigation unfolds. The discovery has sent shockwaves to the community, raising fears about the prevalence of ritualistic practices. Janet Ogutu, Traceability TV. The World Health Organization has once again declared a global public health emergency, this time due to a resurgent outbreak of Mpox in Africa. The situation is critical, but there is hope as several countries have pledged to provide vital support. Our reporter has more on the international response to this crisis. Countries around the world are stepping up to support Africa in its fight against the latest outbreak of Mpox. The disease, previously known as monkeypox, has been declared a global public health emergency by the World Health Organization for the second time in two years. In response, several nations have pledged to donate doses of Mpox vaccines to African countries, aiming to address the severe inequity that left the continent without access to these critical shots during the previous outbreak in 2022. The donations are a significant step towards controlling the spread of the disease and ensuring that all regions have the necessary resources to protect their populations. This situation remains critical, but with this international cooperation, there is hope that the outbreak can be contained. Mildred Zakini, Traceability TV, Nairobi, Kenya. In Sudan, a natural disaster has compounded an already dire humanitarian crisis. A dam collapse has triggered catastrophic floods, leaving many dead and scores more missing. This disaster has hit a country already suffering from prolonged conflict, making the rescue efforts even more challenging. Our correspondence brings us the latest from the ground. Eastern Sudan is grappling with the aftermath of a catastrophic dam collapse that has resulted in deadly floods. The Abat Dam burst on Sunday, causing waters to surge through communities, claiming the lives of at least 30 people, with many more feared missing. This disaster is the latest in a series of floods that have hit Sudan during an unusually intense rainy season. Emergency responders are working tirelessly to locate survivors and assess the full scale of the damage. The floods come as Sudan continues to endure the hardship of a prolonged conflict, further complicating rescue and recovery efforts. The situation remains dire as the country faces the dual challenges of a natural and human-made disasters. Rhoda Mose, Traceability TV. In Tunisia, a significant legal victory for a prominent opposition figure has shaken up the political landscape. A court ruling has allowed Abdelatif Meki to re-enter the race for the presidency, a decision that could have far-reaching implications for the upcoming election. Our reporter has the full story on this unfolding political drama. The opposition politician Abdelatif Meki has been granted the right to resume his presidential campaign following a crucial court ruling. Meki was initially excluded from the race by the Electoral Commission due to insufficient popular endorsement, 
successfully appealed the decision. The court's ruling, which is final, cannot be challenged. Paves the way for Meki to continue his bid for the presidency in the election set for October 6th. This development has stirred the political landscape in Tunisia, where the upcoming election is expected to be highly contested. Meki supporters are celebrating the court's decision, viewing it as a victory for democracy and fairness. Evans Lucy, Traceability TV. Political tensions in Mexico are reaching new heights as the ruling coalition edges closer to a supermajority in the Senate. The potential impacts of this development are vast, especially concerning proposed judicial reforms that have sparked controversy both domestically and internationally. Our correspondent has the details. Mexico's political landscape is heating up after two opposition senators switch sides, moving the ruling coalition just one seat shy of a two-thirds supermajority in the Senate. The development is crucial as it could allow the coalition, led by President-elect Claudia Sheinbaum, to push through a controversial judicial reform by altering the Constitution. The prospect of such changes has already caused an ease in the financial markets and strained relations with Mexico's northern neighbors, the United States and Canada. The potential for significant shifts in the judicial system has sparked debates across the country, with critics warning of the risks to democracy, while supporters argue it's necessary for long overdue reforms. The situation remains fluid as political maneuvering continues in the lead up to crucial vote. Rinta Luther, Traceability TV. In Guatemala, alarming reports have surfaced regarding the treatment of an imprisoned journalist. The United Nations has raised serious concerns, suggesting the conditions he is being held in could amount to torture. Our reporter has the latest on this disturbing case. The United Nations has raised serious concerns about the treatment of journalist Jose Ruben Zamora, who has been imprisoned in Guatemala for the past two years. According to a recent report, Zamora is being held in conditions that could amount to torture, posing a life-threatening risk to his health. Zamora, who founded the now defunct El Periodoco newspaper, was arrested on money laundering charges in July 2022, but he insists that his imprisonment is politically motivated due to his work against the then-president, Alejandro Gematei. The UN's findings have sparked outrage among human rights groups who are calling for Zamora's immediate release and a full investigation into the conditions of his detention. The Guatemalan government has yet to respond to these allegations, but the international pressure is mounting. Regan Gitao, Traceability TV. We believe in the power of standards to transform the way we work and live. GS1, the global language of business. The government of Cameroon is taking decisive action to comply with new European Union regulations that could have a significant impact on one of the country's most vital industries. Our correspondent explains what this means for Cameroon's cocoa exports. Cameroon is taking significant steps to meet new European Union regulations on deforestation-free products, particularly in its cocoa industry. On Wednesday, the country's Cocoa and Coffee Association signed agreements with six major cocoa exporters to implement a platform that will provide precise location of cocoa plantations. This initiative is crucial as the EU remains Cameroon's largest market, accounting for about 80% of the country's cocoa exports in the 2023-2024 farming season. By ensuring that their cocoa is sourced from deforestation-free areas, Cameroon aims to maintain its access to the lucrative European market while promoting sustainable farming practices. This move is seen as a positive step towards balancing economic growth with environmental responsibility. Mildred Zakini, Traceability TV. 
In a tragic story from Cameroon, a family meal has turned deadly, resulting in the loss of multiple lives, including young children. This heartbreaking incident has left a small village in mourning and raised serious concerns about food safety in the region. Our reporter has the details on this devastating event. In Ngolambele, a village in Cameroon's east region, six people, including children as young as eight, have died after consuming poisoned fufu corn. The incident occurred on August 26, 2024, when the family unknowingly prepared their meal using cornwell that had been treated with toxic substances intended to repel farm animals. The victims were taken to the regional hospital in Batua, but sadly, it was too late for six of them. Two survivors are currently receiving medical care. This tragedy has highlighted the dangers of using toxic chemicals in farming practices, especially when the risk to human health are not fully understood. The local community is in mourning as authorities investigate how this devastating mistake occurred. Regan Getao, Traceability TV. We are now taking a commercial break. Stay tuned for more news updates after the break. Welcome to Traceability TV, your ultimate destination for all things traceability. We're the global platform that brings you the latest in traceability news, interviews and live event coverage. From in-depth news updates to exclusive interviews, Traceability TV keeps you informed on the practices that are transforming industries worldwide. Our mission is simple, empowering organizations to achieve transparency, accountability, and sustainability throughout their supply chains. Our vision, a world where every product's journey is visible, ethical, and sustainable. At Traceability TV, we offer unparalleled opportunities for brand visibility. Feature your company, highlight your traceability solutions, and showcase your commitment to GS1 standards. Leverage our expertise to create high-quality advertisement videos that resonate with your audience. A sponsor segment to position your brand as a leader in the traceability space. You can support us by partnering on special projects. Your contributions help us deliver more in-depth analyses and expand our global coverage. Traceability TV is more than just a channel. It's a movement. Join us in building a future where every product's journey is visible and trusted. Traceability TV. We trace it, you trust it. Welcome back. In business news, Namibia has made the discovery of increased crude oil reserves that has ignited a wave of excitement among investors. This newfound energy potential is propelling Namibian assets to new heights, particularly as the nation approaches its upcoming election. The discovery of substantial crude oil reserves in Namibia has been nothing short of a game changer. Investors are flocking to Namibian assets, driving the local government bond index fund to what could be its most significant annual jump on record. This exchange-traded fund, which is listed on the Namibian Stock Exchange and in South Africa, has surged over 20% in U.S. dollar terms. This spike is largely attributed to the ongoing exploration success led by Portugal-based Gulp, which continues to uncover more oil reserves in the region. The timing of these discoveries, just ahead of Namibia's national elections, has added an extra layer of intrigue. Many investors see this as a signal of strong economic potential which could reshape the nation's financial landscape in the coming years. Roda Mose, Traceability TV. Moving on to South Africa, one of the nation's largest grocery chains, Peak and Pay, has issued a profit warning for the first half of the year. The grocer is bracing for a challenging period ahead with a decline in trading profits expected.
Pick and Pay, a household name, is filling the pinch of the rising cost of living and the competition in the retail sector is intensifying. The company has not provided specific figures yet, but the outlook suggests a challenging road ahead for the retailer. As the company navigates these difficulties, all eyes will be on how it strategizes to maintain its market position. Marianne Munyoki, Traceability TV. Turning now to Australia, where inflation is showing signs of easing, though progress remains slow. The latest data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics indicates a slight decrease in inflation, but the road to recovery is still long. Australia's inflation rate dropped to a four-month low in July, with the consumer price index rising at an annual pace of 3.5%, down from 3.8% in June. This reduction is largely due to the government rebates on electricity bills, which provide some relief to consumers. However, the broader picture remains challenging as price gains in other sectors continue to disappoint. This lower-than-expected progress has led many to believe that a near-term cut in interest rates is unlikely, as the Reserve Bank of Australia might need more time to curb inflation effectively. Rinta Luther, Traceability TV. And in Japan, the iconic 7 and I Holdings is facing a significant test of its resolve. The company is seeking government protection in response to a preliminary takeover offer from Canada's alimentation Kush Tard. 7 and I, a cornerstone of Japan's retail industry, is under pressure after confirming that it had received a takeover offer from alimentation Kush Tard, valued at $38 billion. In response, Seven and I is seeking greater government protection, a move that has sparked debate over the direction of Japan's economic reforms. Critics argue that this reflexive measure for protectionism could undermine efforts to revitalize Japan's economy, which has struggled with stagnation for decades. The situation is developing rapidly, and it will be interesting to see how Japanese government and the company navigate this potential takeover. Regan Getau, Traceability TV. An earthquake with a magnitude of 6.1 has rattled the waters just off the coast of El Salvador earlier this week. The tremor was felt across various parts of the country, promoting concerns about potential aftershocks and the safety of coastal communities. Although there have been no immediate reports of severe damage or casualties, the situation remains fluid. Emergency services are on high alert and officials are urging residents in vulnerable areas to stay vigilant. The earthquake struck at approximately 6.04 p.m. with its epicenter located off the Pacific coast of El Salvador. The trauma was strong enough to be felt in the capital San Salvador and in several other regions across the country. While there have been no reports of major structural damage or injuries so far, the authorities are not taking any chances. In coastal areas, residents have been advised to stay away from the beaches as a precaution given the potential for aftershocks. Schools and public buildings are being inspected for any signs of damage, and local emergency services are on standby ready to respond if necessary. The situation is still developing, and we are waiting for further assessments from geologists to understand the full impact of the systemic event. We will continue to monitor the situation and provide updates as they become available. Mildred Zakini, Traceability TV. Turning now to Japan, where the nation is on high alert as a powerful typhoon is rapidly approaching. Typhoon Shanshan, categorized as very strong, is barreling towards southwestern Japan with guards reaching up to 252 kilometers per hour or 157 miles per hour. Authorities have issued emergency warnings with some residents in the storm's path being ordered to evacuate. The atmosphere in southwestern Japan is tense as Typhoon Shanshan edges closer to the coast. Officials are warning that this could be one of the most powerful storms to hit the region in recent years. Evacuation orders have been issued for areas expected to be hit hardest. 
the emergency shelters are being prepared to accommodate those fleeing the storm. As you mentioned, key industries like Toyota have halted operations as a precaution. Public transportation services are also being affected, with many flights and trains already cancelled. Residents are being urged to stay indoors and stock up on essential supplies as the storm continues to advance. We we'll continue to monitor the situation closely and provide updates as the storm makes landfall. Janet Ogutu, Traceability TV. In Europe, an Icelandic volcano has erupted, sending lava and smoke billowing over the southwestern part of the country. The eruption, which began on Thursday on the Reykjanes Peninsula, has raised concerns about air pollution, particularly as it continues on to its second day. The eruption has already forced the evacuation of a nearby spa resort, and authorities are warning residents in the area to take precautions against the spread of volcanic gases and ash. Our international correspondent has more on this and Unfolding situation. The scene in southwestern Iceland is both awe inspiring and concerning. The volcano's eruption began late Thursday with dramatic fountains of molten rock lighting up the night sky. However, the beauty of the spectacle is overshadowed by the potential danger it poses. The ongoing eruption has triggered worries about air quality in the region, especially with the wind potentially spreading volcanic gases and ash. While there have not been any reports of injuries, the situation remains fluid and local officials are closely monitoring the air quality. Residents are being advised to stay indoors as much as possible and to use masks to protect themselves from inhaling any harmful particles. Rinta Luther, Traceability TV. Hello and welcome to Visibility Sports News. I'm your host Regan Gitao. First up, a shocking revelation from Australian football. Matilda's midfielder, Ivy Luik, has disclosed that she was handed a three-month doping ban by Italian authorities earlier this year. Luik, who played for the Naples-based club Pomigliano, revealed on a podcast that the ban stemmed for a cortisone injection she received back in March 2022. This news has certainly sent ripples through the football community, both in Australia and internationally. Avi Luik, a seasoned player with a distinguished career, is now facing the consequences of an action taken over two years ago. The cortisone injection she received was intended to manage a nagging injury while she was playing in Italy. However, under anti-doping regulations, cortisone is a substance that is restricted unless properly documented for therapeutic use. Luke mentioned on the podcast that she had no idea this would lead to a ban, and the delayed notification by the Italian authorities left her in a difficult position as she was gearing up for what could have been her last Olympics. Luke has expressed her disappointment, but has also stressed the importance of athletes being aware of every substance they are administered, regardless of intent. This story serves as a stark reminder of the complexities surrounding anti-doping regulation in sports. Rhoda Wasse, Traceability TV. Next, we turn our attention to La Liga where Girona's manager Michel is maintaining a positive outlook, despite a rocky start to the season. Girona, who took the league by storm last year with a stunning campaign that saw them challenging the likes of Real Madrid and Barcelona, have yet to secure a win in their first two matches of this season. It's been a surprising start for Girona, especially after their remarkable performance last season. Michel's side was the talk of La Liga, as they not only competed with the giants of Spanish football, but also secured a historic third-place finish, and in them a spot in the Champions League for the first time. However, the momentum from last season hasn't carried over into the current campaign. Michel, in his recent press conference, acknowledged the disappointment, but urged supporters to remember that the season is long, and early results don't always define the outcome. He emphasized that the team is still finding its rhythm and they have the talent and drive to turn things around. Michel remains confident with that hard work and persistence. Girona will soon be back to their winning days. Evans Lucy, Traceability TV. Finally, 
Some transfers from Serie A. Atalanta has bolstered their squad by sending veteran Portuguese goalkeeper Rui Patricio on a one-year deal. The 36-year-old joins Atalanta as a free agent after leaving AS Roma, where his contract expired. This is a significant signing for Atalanta as they look to strengthen their defense. Rui Patricio, with his extensive experience both at the club and international level, is expected to be a key figure in their squad. Atalanta needed a reliable presence in goal after allowing Juan Musso to join Atletico Madrid on loan. Patricio's arrival fills that gap, and given his track record, he could be instrumental in Atalanta's push in both Serie A and European competitions this season. His leadership and composure would be crucial, especially with a relatively young squad around him. It's a one-year deal, but it could be exactly what Atalanta needs as they aim for another strong season. Janet Ogutu, Traceability TV. And that wraps up our news bulletin for the day. Stay tuned for an informative documentary on food traceability from farm to fork. I've been your host, Miriam Munyoki, and this is Traceability TV. We believe in the power of standards to transform the way we work and live. GS1, the global language of business. Every day, we enjoy meals that have traveled long distances to reach our tables. But how much do we really know about where our food comes from? How can we be sure that it's safe, fresh, and responsibly produced? This is where food traceability comes in. A system that tracks the journey of our food from the farm where it's grown to the fork on our plate. In this documentary, we'll explore how food traceability works and why it's becoming more important in today's world. Technology is a key player in food traceability. From the moment a seed is planted to when the final product is packed and shipped, technology helps record every step of the way. Simple tools like barcodes and QR codes store vital information about where and how the food was produced. As food moves through the supply chain, this information is updated and shared. More advanced systems like RFID tags and even blockchain offer even greater transparency. These tools make it easier for everyone, from farmers to retailers, to track and trace food, helping to quickly identify and resolve any issues. Every food's journey begins at the farm. Here, farmers not only grow crops and raise animals, but they keep detailed records of their work. These records might include the type of seeds used, the fertilizers applied, or the healthcare given to livestock. This information is the fast link in the chain of traceability. It helps ensure that the food produced is safe and of high quality. When food leaves the farm, all this data goes with it, forming a crucial part of its traceable history. After leaving the farm, Food often goes through processing, where raw ingredients are transformed into the products we find in stores. This step adds another layer to the traceability process. Each batch of ingredients is tracked through every stage of processing, whether it's washing, cutting, cooking or packaging. This is where standards and practices comes into play. By following set standards, Processes ensure that every product is made safely and can be traced back if needed. Labels on packaging, which often include barcodes or QR codes, provide the key to this information, allowing anyone to trace the product's history. Once food is processed and packaged, it needs to reach consumers, sometimes traveling thousands of miles. This is where the global food network comes into play. 
whether by truck, ship, or plane, food moves through a vast distribution system. Keeping track of this journey is crucial to ensure food stays safe and fresh. Technology and standards help here too. Tracking devices monitor the conditions during transport, like temperature, to make sure perishable items remain fresh. If anything goes wrong, these systems can help trace the issue back to its source quickly, preventing problems before they reach your table. By the time food reaches the store, it's been through a lot. Retailers rely on traceability systems to manage their stock, monitor expiration dates, and ensure the food they sell is safe. For fresh produce, this might mean tracking how long it's been on the shelf, while for packed goods, it means ensuring that any issues can be tracked back quickly. With more consumers wanting to know where their food comes from, traceability systems offer an answer. By scanning a barcode or QR code, customers can learn about the product's journey from farm to fork, helping them make informed choices. Behind every successful traceability system are the standards and regulations that guide the food industry. Governments and international organizations set these rules to make sure food is safe at every stage of its journey. These standards also make it easier for different parts of the food chain to work together by using a common language for tracking and sharing information. While it's up to each business to implement these systems, using standardized methods like those offered by organizations such as GS1 helps create a more reliable and transparent food supply. Traceability isn't without its challenges. From climate change to supply chain disruptions, there are many factors that can complicate the process. But these challenges have also driven innovation. New technologies like artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things are helping create smarter, more resilient traceability systems. By continuously improving these systems and adopting best practices, the food industry can better navigate the obstacles ahead ensuring that the food on your plate is safe and trustworthy. At the end of the day, food traceability is more than just tracking products. It's about protecting our health, supporting sustainable practices, and building trust in our food system. By making food traceable, we can quickly address safety concerns, promote better nutrition, and ensure that food is produced responsibly. It's also about giving consumers the power to make informed choices by knowing where their food comes from and how it was made. As we look to the future, food traceability will continue to evolve. New farming methods like urban agriculture and lab-grown foods will bring new challenges and opportunities. Technology will play an even bigger role, making traceability more detailed and accessible. And as consumers continue to demand transparency, the importance of traceability will only grow. By embracing standards and innovations, we can create a food system that is safer, more sustainable and ready for the future. From farm to fork, the journey of our food is one of care, trust and responsibility. By understanding and supporting traceability, we help ensure that the food we eat is safe, sustainable, and true to its story. Whether you're a farmer, a processor, a retailer, or a consumer, we all play a part in this journey. Together, we can build a better future for our food, one that is transparent, trustworthy, and safe for everyone. The journey of food traceability is a journey of trust, from the farm to your fork.